Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on the time zone that uh, you are situated in. Uh, welcome to the second Quad Libet of uh, the season of 2023. The Quad Libet is, uh, well, is the online open forum for dialogue on early music matters. Uh, we think that early music matters. Yeah, you see what I did there. Uh, online, of course, we learned we learned how to do all these things because of the pandemics, but now we are using them because it helps us to get uh, more connected and also to have, um, let's say, uh, agile, easy conversation going on instead of having to wait for uh, big events. So we try to keep it uh, um, interactive. We try to keep it alive. Um, all the participants are encouraged to share their views on the on the topics that we that we discuss and uh, this is one of the main initiatives of the um, early music task force of the European Association of uh, Conservators. So in, represented from that uh, task force, we have uh, Kelly Landerkin from Basel, we have Claire Michon from uh, uh, Poitiers, and uh, where is he? Anton from Anton Steck from Trossingen, Germany, and uh, myself, uh, I'm uh, located in The Hague in the Netherlands, but I'm actually Spanish, uh, originally Spanish. And uh, we have done uh, this series of, of uh, uh, Quod Libet on different topics. We have, this is already the third uh, season, uh, the third uh, installment, the third package of, of uh, uh, Quod Libet sessions. The first one was more centered on uh, personalities of the early music uh, movement. The second one started to focus a bit more on specific topics, and we are following on this one, on this uh, third season of 2023, on which we started with a, a session dedicated to, uh, we call it gramophonically informed performance practice on the effect of recordings on the early music at uh, several levels. Yeah, that was the discussion that we had uh, one month ago with uh, Professor Leach Wilkinson. And uh, today we are opening our world in a way, um, following one of the other lines of work that we have at the, at the, uh, in the task force uh, for early music of the European Association of the Conservatoires. One of the topics that we have to address that is kind of like a uh, transversal topic is the topic of globalization. So we took the idea of, uh, we transformed this idea because globalization has, many interpretations, we took this idea of going beyond Europe or and trying to get out of our uh, Europe-centric perspective. Yeah? In that sense, we are going to be connecting with uh, schools that share the same uh, sort of focus that the schools that are represented uh, in the European Association of Conservatoires and specifically the group of interest of, uh, of uh, early music, um, interested in the topics, in the family of topics related to, uh, to early music. And this is the very first uh, session in that, uh, in that direction. Yeah? So for this session, we have invited the, representative of, the representatives of up to four uh, higher education institutions that, uh, have, uh, that offer early music. And we basically want to establish conversation with them, to ask them uh, how was the uh, experience of setting up an uh, early music uh, department or, or faculty or section in, in your respective institutions. Uh, how are these institutions to the ones that, to, uh, that, you, that you belong in, in a way with your, uh, with your department? And uh, basically the whole topic of what are the challenges and the opportunities, as we always say, that are derived from these, uh, uh, let's say, initiatives. Huh? So the four institutions are, uh, the Universidad Católica of uh, Chile, Santiago de Chile, uh, also from Chile, the Universidad Alberto Hurtado, Santiago de Chile also, uh, from Mexico, the Universidad, uh, what is the name? Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, please correct me if I say something wrong, eh? the UNAM, and uh, uh, from Argentina, the uh, Conservatorio Manuel de Falla of uh, Buenos Aires. All these institutions some of them have a longer or a shorter, uh, uh, let's say, life uh, uh, in this topic, but all of them are offering or are planning to offer specialization on early music. 
um, the very first thing that I would like is uh, for people to present themselves, uh, and maybe we can follow the same uh, the same order that I uh, that I started. So from the Universidad Católica of Santiago de Chile, we have uh, let me find it again. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. We have Sergio Candia and Florencia Bardavid. Maybe if Sergio and Florencia can say just like uh, uh, a few things about themselves. Yes. Um, do you want us just to introduce ourselves, or yeah, because just, we just have... yourself, just yourselves as individuals, and then we will start with the institution. And then we will start. Um, um, Sergio Candia, is, do you? Quieres presentarte tú solo, Sergio, o te presento yo? Está mudo. Sorry for the for the sí, solo que interaction. No voy a hablar en inglés, voy a hablar en castellano. Sí. Bueno, okay. Sergio Candia, eh, soy profesor en, el, en la Universidad Católica de Chile. Sergio Candia eh, es uh, staff teacher en la the, the Catholic, Univers Catholic University of Chile. Eh, toco flauta dulce, enseño flauta dulce también hace muchos años allí y además de otros cursos de, del área de música antigua, porque ya vamos a ver que tenemos nosotros una carrera de instrumentos antiguos eh, en nivel de pregrado, y también ahora algunas, se están abriendo algunas líneas al, al posgrado, y, y allí tenemos un equipo de, de profesores. Eh, yo fui el fundador de esa, de esa línea de música antigua, junto con la profesora Gina Allende, que vio la gamba y que no, no pudo estar aquí eh, ahora. Sergio Candia is recorder uh, is a recorder player, recorder teacher since many years at the university, and um, he has also he also um, says that we will talk later about the the study programs that we have. We have under undergraduate and graduate studies at the at the university. He also teaches other courses related to the early music uh, area. And I am uh, Florencia Bardavid. I am um, a viola da gamba player and viola da gamba teacher at the Catholic University since 2015. And I teach also a couple of other courses in the in the university. Good, very good, Florencia. Very good, uh, Sergio. Thank you very much. If we go now to uh, our representatives from the Universidad, Alberto Hurtado, also from Chile. Uh, Christian, you have the word. Hello, nice to meet you, everyone. Very great to see you here. And thank you, Isaac, for this kind invitation. You can hear me properly, yes? Everything's OK? OK. We have, well, a little, we, are... we have a little bit of feedback, but I don't think it is from you. Someone who has the, mic the microphone open. Maybe open the microphone. Yeah, maybe everyone can uh, just mute themselves, make sure that they are muted, unless you're using uh, uh, headphones. That would make it, I think it's better now. Someone was, someone was having a little bit of feedback. Go, Christian. Good, my name is Christian Gutierrez. I'm a lute player. I studied in, in Chile, classical guitar, and then I moved to Spain and I studied in the SMUC and the Conservatorio Superior de Sevilla in Seville. And then I moved to Holland, where I met my friend Isaac and many people here that I see here. And I studied there and I did my master in Holland. And I came back to Chile the year 2014, 15, I don't remember. I spent many years in Europe, 12, 13 almost. And I'm back teaching in the University of Alberto Hurtado, uh, where we decided since very first, just last year, to open a program of early music uh, field. And now I'm teaching, I'm the director of the program. And uh, at the same time, I'm the teacher of some subjects as well, like uh, uh, the introduction to early music, uh, early music treatise, and at the same time, I teach the lute and placket historical strings. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's proceed now to uh, Mexico, to the UNAM. I think we can give the floor now to uh, Norma. Maybe first, then Gabriela, or the other way around, as you prefer. Uh, <laughs> I think it's Gabriela who will uh, talk, and Rafael, they will present. I am a Habsburg teacher in the university, but they will talk with you. <laughs> 
Good, very good. And uh, maybe just to introduce yourselves also, Gabriela and, and Rafael, maybe in that order. Gabriela, you can say some words about yourself. You're muted, Gabriela. Just check the... Like, yes. yes, sorry. Uh, I play the viola da gamba and I've been uh, a teacher at the UNAM, at the music school, music college of the UNAM for 34 years. And um, well, we'll talk a little bit about how we've managed to start building a, an early music department there. Okay. I also teach music history. Very good. Thank you very much. And uh, Rafael? Hello, everybody. My name is Rafael Sanchez Guevara. I play viola da gamba as well and cello, uh, baroque cello and classical cello. And I studied uh, viola da gamba with Gabriela Villa here at UNAM for several years. And then I traveled to Montreal and uh, studied there uh, for a few years. And then I teach here since 2015. And uh, with our colleagues have been trying to expand the academical uh, offer to the students since the last many years. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Maybe also, I think Antonia and Raul can say something about themselves, just to, to introduce yourselves, because you are also part of the staff at the, uh, at the Alberto Hurtado, right? Am I right? Yes, and Felipe as well. Felipe ah, Arias. Felipe. Okay, Felipe Arias, exactly. Uh, Se escucha bien, ¿no? Es que de verdad que tengo mucho miedo con mi... No, más o menos. You can, you can listen something because I have... So, so we have some problems with your sound. But at least if you can say your name, what you play, where you studied or something like that. Okay, I speak slowly. My name is Raúl Orellana. I, I did my Baroque violin study in Milan, in Italy. Uh, I started in 2000, then I stayed there um, also working and taking experience in Europe for 12 years. Then I came back to Chile and I started to do some lessons, but uh, from last year with Christian, Antonia, Felipe, Luciano, uh, we are working together in this uh, new uh, department of ancient music. Where I I make I I make lessons of viola in baroque um, viola uh, chamber music and uh, ornamentation. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Raúl. Antonia. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, I'm I, I play Baroque oboe and also I I teach Baroque oboe in the uh, Universidad Alberto Hurtado, and also I have some uh, subject I I give some subject uh, bar, uh, dance early dance also, and um, that's it. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy to see you. And uh, Felipe, you want to also say some words, maybe, about yourself? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Felipe Arias. Uh, I am the teacher of Basso Continuo mm -hmm. in the in the Alberto Hurtado University. Um, I have uh, to the um, the experience as a singer. I am a tenor, uh, and my curriculum of, of early music is uh, very variated, variated, and. Uh, um, almost everything here in Chile and in, in several uh, ensembles here in Chile and uh, especially uh, with La Consonancia, uh, this, this ensemble with Christian, uh, Antonia, Raul, and Luciano. That's it. Okay, okay, thank you very much. I think now we have introduced everyone that is uh, representative of one of these institutions that are presenting themselves today. We finally, it seems we're not going to have uh, uh, Conservatorio Manuel de Falla, 
Uh, but in any case, I have some information about them that I will share also at, uh, at appropriate moments. Uh, well, this is very, it is really exciting for me to have you to have you all here. I have been contacting these different schools individually and trying to learn as much as possible about uh, their programs and the context in which they in which they work. Uh, but now is the, the moment to put these things uh, in common. It's, it was also a process of, of getting in touch again with with uh, with with old friends. Yeah, disclaimer, I've been a lot of time like uh, uh, in contact with Christian and Antonia Florencia, so these people I know from a long time already. Um, but I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be impartial, anyhow, <laughs> in the times. So the idea is not so much that you guys have to do a presentation, but at this point, it would be nice if you have something that you want to present. We can also we can also do it. Yeah. The the point would be not to make it too long so that we can keep it uh, more kind of a dialogue. Uh, we can also interrupt each other and bring up questions, etc. So I would first of all ask you guys if anyone has a presentation that they want to project. Maybe you can uh, raise your hand or use the reactions now uh, to do it. Like this kind of thing when you raise your hand in the in the yeah. Is for example uh, someone from Mexico. Uh, yeah, Gabriela is going to make a presentation. Also, I think Christian had a PowerPoint that you wanted to show. Uh, maybe also Florencia. Okay, so let's do it. Maybe just in that order. We start with 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 uh, Gabriela from from the UNAM. Uh, I I think I you can just click share screen if you want to do something like that. If you want to present, but just try. If it doesn't work, we can fix it. But I think it works. Okay. see can you can you hear me yes yeah, we can hear you we can hear you okay. and i'll just start this ah yeah i can see this perfectly also yes no problem Sorry about that. okay you can see the yeah it is okay i can see the presentation okay. i guess everyone else can see that also okay well i thought that it would be convenient to um share with you a few uh, a little bit of information about our university because we it's a unique situation that has in some ways helped and in some ways not so much but um the university the unam the national public university was founded in 1910 uh in in 1929 it obtained its uh, its autonomy that means they that we get to uh decide how to spend the money that the university has, and it has its own administration and can make its own decision, decisions about academic things. The main campus was uh, started in the 50s, that's Ciudad Universitaria, but the university, oops, how do I move this? The university is so, is so big that um, it, has, it has many, many different campuses. Um, it's, the, the problem with the university is that it's enormous. It has, um, and this is just a small part, but it has 20 colleges, 35 re research institutes. Uh, it has uh, 133 bachelor's degree with degrees, which offer 241 degree options and 42 graduate centers. It has 370,000 students, 42,000 uh, faculty members. So it's it's very big, and it that causes uh, many problems because it has a huge bureaucracy, and anything you try to do to change it um, is is very time consuming, and it, it's very difficult. There, there's all these steps that one has to do, uh, take in order to change something. Um, the university also has different uh, sites uh, in the city, but also in in the country and also outside of Mexico City. So it's very, very big. Uh, La Facultad de Musica, the music college, is outside the main campus. It has about 700 students, uh, uh, 500 faculty members, and it has four academic le academic levels. There's the Centro de Iniciación Musical for Children, which is in our, our, our school. 
Uh, then there's the propedeutico, which is uh, initiation, because in Mexico, music education is not uh, very well organized. And um, so it was necessary to begin all the degrees, the, the bachelor degrees with these three years. It's very long, makes it a very long course, but um, it was thought to be necessary. So each, each degree has its own propedeutico. Uh, the, the bachelor's degree, the bachelor degrees, the licenciaturas are four years, and then there's the graduate program. But we're going to talk today mostly about the, um, the uh, bachelor degrees. There are six, six um, degrees at our, facu at our facultad, singing, composition, music education, ethnomusicology, and then instrumentalist and piano and the, the early music uh, instruments are of course here, at, of which we have recorder. Well, for the first instrument to be included was harpsichord, then recorder and viola da gamba only very recently. Um, this is the, these are all the, ins the instruments that belong to the degree of instrumentista uh, accordion, harp, uh, winds, uh, string instruments, harpsichord, organ, etc. And so they basically all, they're all the same program, which is the problem. This is the, um, the map for the propedeutico, which is basically um, ear training and uh, instrument the whole three years. And then we have introduction to music. This is the Taller de Inducción a la Vida Universitaria is just to know about the university. Um, a couple of semesters of social uh, things with music, four semesters of harmony, two of counterpoint. Uh, all the instrumentistas have basically the same structure. Some have a few uh, specific things. This is, um, choir, and then because this is for the harpsichord and organ, they have special uh, courses. This is the, um, this is the um, map for all the instruments as they exist today. And they basically, uh, well, especially recorder is the, the one that has suffered the most because it has to, uh, follow the same plan and it's the same plan as any other instrument and of course they can't really uh, have an orchestra and so they've the, the the funny thing about the university is that in on the one hand it's very difficult to change things but on the other our musical school tends to be quite flexible in ways to get around things so they have accepted uh, the the um, recorder consort instead of orchestral, uh, having experience in in orchestra, and um, but they have to to have the same program. The um, the difference that we had this is viola da gamba that was very recently accepted, and we were allowed we were allowed to change a few things. So now we have a consort for vials, which is has credit. And we were able to change all the four semesters of uh, uh, theory and analysis to something more specific for early music. And um, that was, we couldn't change too much. It was, it was very difficult. We had, to, we had some many constraints and it took us four years, but we finally managed to make viola da gamba a, um, an official instrument. The, a little bit of the history of, of how this happened, well, very schematically, the harpsichord was included in the 70s, then the recorder in the 80s. These were teachers who were studying abroad and then went back to Mexico, and they fought for these uh, degrees. And Viola da Gamba, though I began working on this 30, more than 30 years ago, it was, it became more and more difficult. And so first Viola da Gamba was an elective. And to how, to that, first it was just, they just allowed people to study without any sort of credit, but then it became an elective in 2008 with Baroque violin. 
And more recently, uh, we have added these electives. With, they're not official instruments that you can actually have a degree, but we, um, we hope to change that soon. And uh, finally, uh, in 2020, our director uh, told us that she wanted to make an early music degree. And so we started working on it. And the instruments, these are the instruments that it will include. We're still working on it. And this is our plan so far. It's still, it's not complete yet but we have had much more freedom in how to organize it. And so we have certain areas, um, performance areas. And so it's the instrument, um, chamber music, orchestra or consorts, depending on the instrument and singing. And then we have um, <clears throat> performance with musical structure, uh, basso continuo and um, ornamentation and improvisation and some, a, uh, a couple of semesters of a, a workshop for, um, with other disciplines. And um, the historic part, investigation part, and pedagogy of, of um, music histories. And then these semesters are specifically for uh, music from New Spain, um, the colonial music, and um, two semesters of basically anything that we want to study that's very flexible here. And they have to write a, a paper or some kind of text to in order to graduate. And then we have the electives. And this, this is just a li list of the elect electives that we have thought of. Um, they don't like electives very much. So they have tried to limit us. So. Uh, Second instrument, tuning and historic temperaments, new music for early instruments, which they will take with composers from the, our music school, languages, and we want them to be able to uh, share with the graduate program seminars uh, that might be interesting for them and that they could get credit from. And also in uh, history of art, which they would have to travel to the main campus to, um, to in order to take these seminars because they're in another part of the city and recording technology. So that's very quickly what we're trying to do. Thank you very much, Gabriela. Just in order to, uh, to see if I understood, the, there are some early instruments that are already present, but they are using this kind of like instrumentista uh, let's say frame, yeah. And of course, the difficulties of making that an early music specific uh, course are, are are really big because you have a lot of structure that is based on, let's say, the tradition of the conservatoire of the 19th century, 20th century, etc. Huh? And now exactly. you want to have a specific degree for early music, yeah, which also will give the possibility of having more specialties, to have more uh, different instruments. Yeah? One question: I don't know if this is possible, but could it be that we can uh, have some of this information? Does it have to be in PowerPoint format? Could be, and we can share it and also uh, for the people that are present and may, to, for them to check afterwards. And also because this is uh, one of our uh, secret hobbies at the task force, we're always reading study plans. We we like to, uh, to see this kind of, of information. Maybe if it is possible uh, to share this. Of course, you okay. mean the PowerPoint? That yeah, for was, example, yeah. or or this kind of like this this uh, yeah the maps uh, the structure of the of the studies to see yes yeah, exactly and, and to compare yeah thank you thank you very much so uh, I don't know if uh, the question was now that uh, Rafael takes over from you to present something else or uh, okay then maybe we go uh, to Christian for example yeah, we we have a question from Claire. Ah, yes yes okay ah yeah 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 that's right. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Gabriela. Um, my question, or actually it's uh, Judith's question, is if in um, the PowerPoint you will send, if we could have also the names of the teachers, if you could add the name oh, of the teachers. Yes, of course. Merci. Thank you. Then we proceed. Christian, you have the floor now. Hey, Gabriela, can you stop? Uh, could you stop sharing the screen, please? You did. Thanks. 
Hello, thank you. I think Antonia have the our uh, PowerPoint, so maybe she can share now the screen and I can speak and describe a little bit, please. Good, absolutely. I think we can hear some counterpoint behind you, Christian. Can you see? Is possible to see? Yes, we hear. Yes, okay. Well, I will. we will focus this presentation more in the early music plan, not speaking about all the careers that we have, but maybe it's nice to mention that the Universidad Alberto Hurtado, we have four uh, studies. We have the Pedagogical uh, General Program of Music, we have as well um, singing, uh, we have choir direction, and since last year we have the Early Music Program. Mm -hmm. So I I put what we have in the website about what are we looking for in this. Um, what I want to tell now is a little bit of everything, so maybe a little bit of the story of the early music in Chile focusing in our university, why we decide to do this and why is happening more or less uh, nowadays in the early music program. So I don't know if we can advance, Antonia. Okay, I, I couldn't resist to put some pictures of our activities. We are so proud of this, so just trying to, to share with you this joy of making early music here, no? Well, uh, now explain here, I can share after this, this PowerPoint as well, there is no problem, so you can read it quietly, I can share with everybody. But this is a little uh, short story about how we became to early music, uh, the movement here in South America when it starts. And the thing is, uh, one of the musicians who started early music here in Chile was Silvia Sublet, one of the renowned persons, and he founded the Instituto de Musica de Santiago, and they, with the time, get many instruments and interesting scores and things that were, at that moment, difficult to, to get in Chile. The thing is, the Universidad Alberto Hurtado just acquired this Institute of Music, finally the, the music department starts from there, so we get a lot of stuff related to early music, since scores, we have a harpsichord, cello, bar baro cello, viola da gamba, tiorbo, some instruments there. So we can say that the, from the beginning, the university, when it started only with the pedagogical department, was in some way linked to the early music. So the other funny thing and why we met here is uh, me, uh, as Antonia, and Raul, and Luciano, and Felipe, is people that we met in Europe. We stay in Europe studying many times, and funny, we studied with some together, so we met in concerts, in tours, playing here, playing there, and suddenly we found that we came back to Chile all together, and I was teaching in the Universidad Alberto Hurtado, and we decided to, to do something with early music, no? ¿Se puede avanzar? So, the thing how we, we, we start is with all this early music environment around in the university and already we have some perfume of early music around the, the, the university and at the same time I think the activity of early music comparing when I lived the, the country in 2002 uh, was really big and huge. So, we decided to start a kind of just program, not program, it was a kind of general courses of early music, we call it introduction to the early music, and was a total successful, we have 23 students, so we really realized that there is a lot of interest in early music here at Chile, so we keep these courses from 2016 until 2018, always full of people, many students, and then in 2019 we started with the Diploma in Music. And the nice thing that we have is the same team who is teaching, I am going to say the people, is Antonia Sanchez, Baroque Obo, Luciano Taulis, Viola da Gamba, Raul Orellana, Baroque Violin, Felipe Arias is our harpsichord, he teaches basso continuo, and me, I'm in the plaquette strings. We found first the group La Consonancia, we play here uh, in some early music circuits in Chile, and at the same time, we are the, we are the pedagogical staff of this early music program. And we try to include as much as possible in the season of the university, some early music cooperating with another 
uh, teachers from here. And at the same time, we are all the time in the careers cooperating with singing, uh, with the choir direction, and some people from pedagogical, pedagogical, that is very interesting, are coming to us with the interest to, to play and to see what is happening with the early music. So we start the last year with the career was a complicated year because, you know, after pandemic, we didn't know what happened, but it was pretty good. We have seven students in the beginning. This year we have more. And in the specialists, we said Baroque violin, Baroque oboe, historical placket strings, and viola da gamba. Uh, we start with a very good luck. We receive a donation from a foundation in in United States. Uh, we can buy instruments for all the the specialities. So that's of course is a really a big uh, advantage here in South America because that used to be the main problem. No, that people is far away for the instruments and sometimes you look at them and in Europe are very expensive. There are not many luthiers. So always is this this how is the way to say this fear no of these instruments. They are more expensive. They are more fragile. So when you can just really give one, uh, lend one, just really change a little bit the the, the landscape for the kids. And at the same time, we have a kind of convenium, conven I don't know how to say it in English, an agreement with a foundation, Chilean foundation, that is was my teacher, guitar teacher, who was a lute player as well. And he have a huge collection of uh, 25 instruments, placket strings, uh, early music. And we have a kind of agreement with them and they lend the instruments to the students of the career. So we have the access to many types of lute and early placket strings. And at the same time, we developed some small season of concerts to our students. Last year was the first year, so we were more focusing in everything start to do everything in the, in the best way possible. And anyway, we have two guest teachers uh, from Europe, our friends as well, <laughs> from that times. And now we are working more and try to make some, some links uh, and some contacts with other universities. We had contact, in fact, with the UNAM in Mexico, yes, talking, and with Bremen, we are trying to make a kind of cooperation. Um, and that's it. We are just, as I told you, just finishing our, starting our second year of, of, of life here in the early music program. Okay, so Christian, there were some initiatives before that was kind of an open course. Uh, yes, we had some an open course, really not for specialists, was kind of introduction of the early music. And we think maybe this is going to work or not. So as I told you, we were really impressed that many people came, about 23 students. So we were just full of lessons and was, wow, this was bigger than we expect. So, so that's why we decided at the university realized that maybe it could be interesting open a program. To open the program. And the mm -hmm. program is one year now. So it's really young. Yes, yes, we are starting our second year. The academic period in South America is March to December. Mm -hmm. And here we have a little bit of our, our program of studies. We have two cycles, a basic cycle, two years with people. Well, the filter that we have, of course, is very difficult here to create a kind of uh, previous or, let's say, uh, basic uh, uh, type of early music plan. So we maybe mainly the, the entrance examination is the big filter, you know, people who is playing already a lot or reading already a lot. And I have the kind help from Spain, my, my, my teachers and people in Spain from the two conservatories to design this cycle of uh, this program of early music. So we have this, of course, principal instrument. And at the same time, we are still dealing and trying to adjust some things because one of the requirements of the university is we have to share some subjects with the other careers at least 50 or 60 percent of subjects. So we have some common, com, uh, common theoretical subjects, but we try following the, the, the advices from Spain to put as much early music as possible, introduction to the music Antigua, early music dance, main instrument, etc. We start immediately in the third semester with some basso continuo, chamber music, and musica y cultura occidental that is focused in early music, and I don't know, Antonio, if we can advance one more, please. And then we have the EPI, that is the evaluation of the middle profile. And then we have other subjects. We have chamber music, basso continuo, Latin American music, focus to the Baroque music, 
temperaments, acoustic, ornamentation, improvisation, exactly. And we have at the same time a subject about production, musical production, uh, about to make recordings and things with a nice engineer who is a lute player as well. And then we have at the end, uh, uh, the last year, that is the titulo, just is just mainly just prepared the concert. We have a subject of cultural uh, affairs, I mean, how to develop projects, etc. And some pedagogical things. And well, that's it, our uh, superior cycle. And I don't know, Antonius, you can go to the end. And uh, just I want to show you the full students, lot of students that we have. Antonia? Antonia, could you? And this is the way just to say goodbye to you, all the, the young team of young people playing early music here in Chile. Good, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian. So a very young program, yeah, of course, young. young, young it's young very fresh. Students. And uh, uh, if I understood correctly, that is five year plan. Huh? It's 10 yes. semesters, what I saw. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. It's also something to, to, to discuss because every plan is different. Also, the number of. Yes, years. of course. I mean, we are, we are still adjust, adjusting some things and we yeah. need to adjust things with the university here. So yes. it's just trying, you know, it's a kind of permanent agreement that, that here, but at the fourth year, they have the degree, bachelor degree, and at the third, five year, the title, you know, the superior. Okay, so that's something, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, this is the sort of things that we have to, that we have to understand because sure. we went to all sure, this sure, uniformization sure. in the, mm -hmm. in the European system. Yes. Uh, by, by, the be quite by the power of Bologna, by the power of the Bologna system, by the... It used to be quite different here yeah. because at the same yeah. time that, conservatories belong to universities so we have to share that kind of rules some way and sometimes it's difficult to explain them that we operate in other ways so it's exactly. it's always this permanent agreement that we have exactly. to looking for good well thank you very much maybe now we can give the floor to Florencia, Florencia and you can, and you can uh, present. present i'm gonna share the screen yes thanks isaac um yeah so this is the 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 Um, sorry that we have the PowerPoint in Spanish, but I'm just going to talk in English uh, what this is about. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the Music Institute, of the, which is part of the Arts Faculty of the Arts uh, College of the Catholic University of Chile. Uh, the university itself was founded in 1888. Uh, it's like very old university old for us because we don't have very old things here in, in especially especially in Chile and um, it's a very big university as well for our standards it, it, it's a university that has uh, around 3,500 teachers and more than 35,000 students so it's like a massive uh, institution here in Chile and it's <clears throat> so and of course the music part of the university is just a tiny tiny part of it um so but in chile there is like an interesting case uh, of uh, of the early music movement let's say because the first early music ensemble that was created here in chile was created in 1954 and it was founded by a viola da gamba a player and a lute player yeah and it's the, the oldest ensemble in in, in ibero america how you say that well spanish speaking america let's say yeah um and this ensemble which was very active at the beginning uh, is previous to the creation of the the, the uh, musical studies in the university mm -hmm. so only in 1975, the, the music uh, careers were opened at the university. And this early, early music ensemble disappeared for a while and was refounded in 1993 by uh, Sergio Candia, who's here uh, at the Code Libet, and Gina Allende. They refounded this, this uh, ensemble. And the interesting thing about this ensemble that it it had its focus not only in playing but also in teaching so they were the ones who pushed uh, to have the early music instruments starting to be part of the studies at the university so 
the first two instruments that opened uh, as a career well, were recorder and gamba. At that time, it was Gina Allende who was teaching the gamba and the flauta dulce who was uh, at that time taught by uh, Sergio Candia and Octavio Asbun. And since the year 2000, some uh, musicians who went to study abroad to Europe mainly, uh, we started to come back to Chile. And in this coming back, uh, we had um, Camilo Brandi, harpsichord teacher, who studied uh, in uh, France, in Grenoble and in Chambéry. He's organ player and harpsichord player. He came back and started to work at the university, uh, first as accompanying uh, the, the viola da gamba and recorded uh, students, and then he took uh, the, the, the harpsichord class, which was opened. Um, and then also uh, Eduardo Figueroa, who did his studies in Milan in a, a plucked instrument. And they also opened the, the, the plucked instruments class around the year, I don't, I don't remember ahora. Sergio, ¿tú sabes, te acuerdas qué año abrieron la UD y clavecín? I have to ask Sergio because he is the one who knows everything. ¿Estás mudo? El 2010. Oh, 2010. Yeah. Um, myself, I, I did my studies. Uh, first, I am a singer too. I have a singing uh, bachelor here in Santiago. And at the same time, I started my gamba studies with Gina Allende. And then I moved to the Netherlands. I did study. We were classmates here with Isaac and Antonia and Rasta, who I saw. She's also here. Uh, so, and I went back to Chile on 2014. And on 2015, I took over the Viola da Gamba class. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the programs that uh, the Instituto de Musica, the Musical Institute of the University offers. And we, we have three uh, parts of the studies. Let's say we have this first part, which is for children, people, younger people who are still at school. And, and it's a program before you can apply to the university. To access to the to access the university studies here in Chile, you have to do a, like a public exam that everybody has to take. Uh, so we have this program for children, like conservatoire thing, and uh, we also have uh, we also offer the early music instruments in this program. But and this is one of the things which is like a, a challenge here in Chile, and Christian mentioned this as well, is that. For us, it's really, really difficult to have access to instruments. So there is no parent who's going to buy a harpsichord to a child for them to study harpsichord, basically, because not only because of the like geographical, we're so far away from everybody and from people who build these instruments, but also like the, the financial part of it is a very big issue here in Chile, uh, even for the students who are already at the university. Yeah, so it, the reality is that we have some instruments uh, and the, in the institute. We have three harpsy chords, we have gamba, one bass, and a, a consort of viols, which were mainly a donation from the Rockefeller Foundation in the 60s. Um, we have recorders, and, 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 but the reality is that the, we, as the teachers, we also lend instruments to the students because it's really hard for them to access uh, these, these tools. Huh? So this is like, because you were at the very beginning of the quote, Libre uh, talking about challenges, and Chile has this challenge. We are very, very isolated, uh, geographically talking, and very far away from, from the world, basically, even from Argentina and from Peru, et cetera. We are far away, very far away. Um, then we have the undergrad studies, uh, the bachelor, let's say, which now we have it in 12 semesters, which is six years of studies. Uh, in 2021, uh, we changed completely the curriculum. Before this, uh, there were only four years. Uh, and now we have six years. And the main difference now, uh, comparing to the previous 
uh, curriculum is that in the previous curriculum, I don't know how to explain this in English, but maybe it's also going to help me find the word. We had the degree, the bachelor degree, but then to access, let's say, the professional diploma, you had to play another concert, let's say. You had to do two exams. One, like, graduation exam, then you had the, the, the grade, the, the academic grade, let's say, bachelor, but then you had to play another uh, concert, do another exam to access the professional diploma. Yeah, and now with the new program, we only have the the the, the degree, the grade, the degree, the degree, degree is the word, the degree. We only have the degree, which is bachelor, and no like the professional uh, title, let's say. Huh? So uh, here, the students in the in the early music part of the of the instruments can uh, study viola da gamba. Harpsichord, lute, tiorbo, baroque guitar, etc., plucked instruments, and recorder. Um, the people studying uh, these instruments will be playing uh, Renaissance, Baroque, classical, and contemporary music. So we try also to include the contemporary part, in, and in, especially in the recorder. Uh, curriculum, it is included also, like to play new music. And the good thing that is that with this new study program, with the new curriculum, we were able to uh, implement subjects which are specific for the early music studies, which we did not have all of them before. Uh, so this change, changing of the curriculum was the opportunity to put because as Gabriela was saying at the beginning, the, uh, since the, the institute is part of the university, changing any subject from any study is years of bureaucracy. So this was the opportunity. And so we did. <laughs> and now uh, we have uh, many courses. I, I'm going to show this, uh, which is in Spanish here, but I'm going to show them to you in the La Maya, how you say? Grill, something like that. There is a, like a yeah, funny the, word. The, for it. the spreadsheet format. The spreadsheet, yeah, with the subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, the students are required to develop their abilities not only in the solistic area, but also as chamber music players. Mm -hmm. And then we offer, uh, we don't have any students yet, but the university offers, the, the arts, the arts uh, college offers also. Uh, um, a master's degree and also a doctorate. But in music, with in early music instruments, sorry, we still uh, haven't had any students. And uh, it, maybe it will be interesting for you there, Isaac, to know that the the master's uh, curriculum that uh, is going on right now is a little bit more like directed towards a. Uh, uh, like musicology study, let's say research in the musicology, uh, let's say idea, yeah. And now the whole master's program will be changed for a program more um, focused on the on the playing part, on the interpretation in the practical part. Yeah? And but this is a work in progress, and this curriculum is going uh, to be changed soon. We are working on that, and as well there is like uh, research in the doctorate. Um, very quickly, I'm going to show you the, the spreadsheet with the subject. This is the standard uh, curriculum for all, all of the instruments and the choir conducting as well that we have. Um, this is common for everybody. Uh, since we are in, inserted in the university, the students have to uh, take uh, other subjects as well, like theological studies, one semester, English test, uh, and other elective subjects, which are part of the curriculum of the university. And then they also have to take other uh, subjects, uh, elective subjects, which make part of the, the musical studies. Mm -hmm. So, and now I'm going to show you, for example, this is the, um, these are the harpsichord subjects. And here we can see the, the subject specific 
for early music, which are uh, Renaissance and Baroque dances, um, Baroque music uh, workshop. This is like chamber music. Uh, well, of course, because it's harpsichord, they have a uh, basso continuo, and then um, theory and treatises from the Renaissance and Baroque. Uh, this is taught by Jean Allende. Um, we also have a, a very, very good uh, dance teacher here. Um, we have vocal Renaissance ensemble that I teach. I teach myself, Sergio Candy, and other teachers, uh, Eduardo Figueroa, I think, too. I'm not 100% sure they did the um, chamber music, etc. Um, and they also have counterpoint. And these two counterpoint subjects are the same for the other instruments as well, not only for the early music instruments. So I don't know the how they teach this because I did not take these classes. I know that they are taught by teachers who are composers or things like that, so I don't know how they are being taught. Yeah, I can't say anything about these two courses, etc. This is a um, recorder um, example. We also, we are lucky enough that we also have a viol consort viol consort and the students also have to play have subjects in which they they play with other other students for example three of my students now are doing a chamber music with a harpsichord student and things like that we don't have many students but they can at least play between them um here is this is viola da gamba i'm, I'm gonna send this over to you uh, isaac so that you can have the powerpoint and this is a lute, a plucked instrument, more or less the same things. And harpsichord again with the whole uh, the whole thing. We also have a baroque a, a baroque violin player, but we still don't have the baroque violin class. He did he studied in Gonzalo is his name, and he studied in in Germany with his master's degree. But, um, and also Sergio and Gina, who are in a way the founders of this uh, impulse that gave birth in a way to the all the early music uh, instruments in the Catholic University. They did study first in Chile and then both of them went uh, to do some short couple of months courses with teachers in Europe, etc. in their own instrument. We have to consider that at that time, the, the career, I mean, I think Sergio did have his uh, bachelor's degree, but I think for Gina, the the, the study, the formal study did not exist yet. So it's this is kind of a very new thing, the professionalization of the studies, and uh, and uh, yeah, so they did very very important work here, opening this space, keeping up the space as well, and and making it bigger. Here, well, part of our work, CDs, recording with uh, uh, colonial music, uh, European music, etc. Um, early music, recorder things, and plucked instruments. Yes, thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Florencia. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, well, we have already seen the structure of uh, three schools, their uh, offer of uh, degrees, their or the plans, <laughs> and the structure of the of the of the studies. And I am very happy to see that we finally have Jorge La Vista amongst us. So a very warm welcome to you, Jorge. Uh, finally, it's very nice to meet you. And this means we have a representative from the uh, fourth school, which is the uh, uh, Conservatorio uh, Superior de Musica uh, Manuel de Falla of Buenos Aires, uh, which also has a uh, early music specialties in their uh, higher music education uh, offer. So I give the floor to Jorge if you want to present something, if you want to introduce the, the school, etc. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for this invitation. Hello, everybody. Um, sorry to be for being late. I, I, I thought that we were we were having four hours instead of five, and I have been given lessons at the conservatorium today. So, but finally I made it. Um, 
I, I, I regret I cannot uh, give such a presentation as uh, the former uh, colleagues, but I can show you, uh, uh, if you allow me to, to share the, the screen, I can show you the, what we have. I'm, I've been preparing very, very fast now while I was listening. Uh, what we have. We, we have several um, advantages and several problems because in the in the atmosphere we are uh, involved politically here it's, it's quite complicated uh, I'm, I'm sure that you all know what, what's going on very much and that sometimes um, the problems we have are probably shared by everybody here in the region not in Europe I suppose and um, so they are in the same sort I know that that things in Europe have been changing for quite a long time. It's not the same time when at least I was there for 12 years in, in, in Netherlands in, and in Basel. So everything has changed very much. Also the programs. So what, that's for me very interesting to, to see for the, because um, we were, uh, I had, from my impression is we were suffering changes uh, which were uh, in this disadvantages of our interests, musical spoke, musically spoken, and uh, academically spoken. So here, for instance, we in the school, in the conservatorium, we we aim, uh, we long for. Uh, how can I say? Um, being uh, to be part of a university uh, atmosphere, because the the the, um, the roof. Is very is very uh, very very close when you belong to an institution which is uh, at th uh, in the third level which is not university and uh, the problems of, of uh, the budget is always a, 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 a cause here it's a, it's a really 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 a, a st stick in the wheel we say and I have to say, for instance, when we try to organize a, a, a Forspiel Abend or a Fortrax Abend or whatever outside the school, we, we don't have the budget to move a harpsichord. Simply that. So the, the, the thing can be carried on, cannot be. So this is, this is really a problematic situation which is the, in, the, in the political order. It's, it's not, nothing to do with the artistic, it's nothing to do with the with the interest of the pupils, which we are very proud of, actually. We, we have, as far as I remember, I think we, we uh, appear as um, a career, uh, as, a, as a part of study, in the year 2006. So we, we are already almost 20 years old. And as far as I remember, I think we were, in Argentina, the first um, structure belonging to an, a head music department of an institution of this sort, not universitary, but uh, not not in part of, of we wish. I would love to be part of your uh, university. Here we have a very very good university, uh, the, the, the the UBA. I mean, the Universidad de Buenos Aires is is one of the best in terms of of, uh, of everything. Uh, the the problem we suffer is always the budget and the money, money and money and money, which I think is also a problem in Europe now nowadays. If you, 20 years to now, I think it has become worse and worse and worse. I, I guess, I don't know, I, I, I have the opportunity to, to go once uh, a year to Holland and I see how, somehow how it's, it's going. But I, I, I've been in, in the year 2019, three, three years ago, after the, before the pandemic, and I've been in the, in the conservatorium and now the conservatorium is gone and you have a new building already, uh, as far as I remember, as far as I know. Is it right? Uh, so, these things would never happen here. So, at least uh, it can be that everything can be worse in, 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 in Europe than that it was 20 or 30 years ago, I'm sure of it, but not an, in the level we, we are, we, we are we're having here. Uh, if you uh, allow me to share the um, screen, I can show you what is our uh, trajecto de studio. A moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can share the screen just just clicking the on it because it should yeah, be yeah, yeah. for everyone. I just, I just found it. I don't see where it is. Uh... Oh, here we are. 
So here is the small schedule we have. We have three, uh, we um, have some sort of uh, very compact study which uh, was always thought in three years, which is called a technicatura or something like a technique. I don't know the name. Uh, it, it, what, what, what is exactly the name in English? I don't really, I don't recall. Technique, I think it is. Where you become, I, I don't know there's a name for it, but it's like a technical sort of diploma. Yes, it is a kind of what it was. Uh, now, now the bachelor is something you can start, and then you have the master. Uh, in the in the time when I was studying, you, you, we have a, a two-year certificate, or we had we had the the, the dozenen musicus and autorum musicus. So we, we we could have or two years or four years uh, at that time in the nineties. Uh, now these have changed, and um, since the, our our department took models of people like me and some some others, which came uh, before me, like Manfredo, for instance, or, or Juan Manuel Quintana, people who, who had the experience of, of uh, uh, preparing themselves out abroad and then came back. So we, we sort of um, gave some ideas, but again, we didn't build, I mean, uh, the teachers, the structure of the school. That was preconceived by someone else. And probably by the, the Ministerio of, of, uh, of uh, Ministerio de Cultura, a cultural ministry of, of which of course never involved artists in their team not at all no, n nor teachers so they are just uh, gestores it's very very difficult to 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 understand why these people thought that for instance a lute player needs two years of continuo a complement complementary continuo and a singer only one this I don't have an explanation for, but you can see it. In the first year, we have a, a instrument one, and then uh, orchestral ensemble, then uh, uh, chamber music, then we have a notation and musical treatises, temperaments and tuning, tuning and temperament, Gregorian chant, uh, El Pif institutional project, and history of the music, and some kind of uh, uh, chosen uh, tajer, which is in this case a dance. And then in the, in the second year, we have uh, instruments two, orchestral ensemble two, uh, chamber music two, and the, the, here comes for, for, for a recorder, traverso, hobo, hobo violin. Uh, well, viol we don't have now as the same teacher as probably in other parts of the world. Uh, baroque cello, uh, viola da gamba, uh, lute. And then you have a harpsichord, which is in the, in the, in the schedule below, and uh, plug instruments, which also involve steel and, and guitar, of course. And uh, then we add in the second year uh, social history of art and vocal polyphony. And now there, there is something missing in this, because this is quite old, this medieval polyphony as well in this part. Um, then in the third and the last year we have the instrument three and the same uh, orchestral ensemble three. Then we have the, the this, uh, phonetica, bajo continuo or through bass two, uh, an optative uh, seminary which could be whatever the, the teacher proposed, uh, American Baroque. Then we have NPIF, Institutional Project three and aesthetic and theory and critics of the music, ethica and deontology, professional deontology, seminary, seminary interpretation, uh, stylistic interpretation approach. It's not a real seminary, but it's some, some sort of it. And in, in singing, it's more or less the same, only that you have uh, an extra charge in, 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 in languages. And of course, you have each year repertoire, repertoire. You have to take a part of less singing lessons, you have to form uh, your your expertise singing roles, opera roles, and, and all parts of, of uh, repertoire. This is a part of uh, the same as in the in the, in the, um, canto subject in the in the conservatorium when you do the normal uh, teaching uh, uh, degree, let's say. And then in, in Clave, uh, Hapsicor and Bajo Continuo, they have the same thing. Uh, we have um, three years 
of each, and you can have a degree on, on, on continuum and a harpsichord, or a harpsichord as a repertoire instrument. This is our, our um, way, let's say. Um, truly, I have to say that n it never happened in three years. There is no time, possible time here, to, to fulfill all the requirements in three years. So pro probably pupils would take four or five in order to end, when lucky, uh, the, 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 the complete trajectory of study. And um, it's, it's, it's going very well in terms of, of the, the lessons itself, but it's not very well placed because of the institutional problems we have due to political issues. This is the reality. Because we depend from the depends, and, the, and this ends up in the, in the cultural ministry, who has a head who does not really know what he's doing. That, that's a problem. When, when you have such a problem, then it spreads all abroad. So I, I think it's a part of a problem we can share with some other countries in the region, as I said. But uh, yeah, I was, thinking, I was thinking about that, Jorge. Thank you very much for uh, for the presentation. Uh, I will also uh, be glad if we can have the this document and then share with all uh, our colleagues. Uh, well, there are some things that come to my mind, and uh, I don't want to do too much uh, emphasis on some of them. Let's say. Everyone here has said that we have problems from the point of view of institutions, yeah, I, in one sense or another, because the bureaucracy is very difficult, because we have several levels, because we have to work inside a structure that is not necessarily designed for this, but it has to be used uh, for, for something else, and uh, or because we have an institution that is really big, really large, like, for example, the, the UNAM, etc. So people who are not part of a university, have the problems of not being part of a university, but people who are part of a university, etc. So I think that's a common thing, a common topic that is amongst uh, all of you. Uh, but let's say, let's say, uh, together with that, uh, of course, uh, economy is a big, uh, is a big issue. Uh, we heard this thing also about the instruments that if you have a instrument fund that might make it possible finally for some of the. Yeah, that I was listening to that from uh, from Chile. I don't know exactly the situation with with that with instruments for the. For the for the UNAB, but in any case, I can guess that is also a problem because what what or also what Jorge was saying that it was not just the instrument, but even moving it was was kind of a problem. But if we don't want to focus necessarily only on the let's say on the uh, negative aspects or the difficult aspects that are there and that they are not so easy to solve, uh, I would like to ask you also for a thing that is uh, very uh, how to say uh, that calls a lot of our attention, at least on, on my side, and it is the sheer variety between the different schools, the different countries, the different systems. Some of, some of them have a degree that is like some other degree, but not really. Some, some of them have six years or five years or three years or four years, etc. I would say that maybe the, the UNAM is closer in the plan they have to, to something that is kind of like European uh, in, in a way, but I would say this in two ways. Uh, the question for me would like, to what point you want to have a similar structure to, to, to Europe or to what point you want to also keep having your own uh, way of, of, uh, of, of organizing studies, your own degree names, even your own programs, etc. And now I'm opening the, the floor so that uh, you all can, can participate. This would be, to what point is desirable to get closer to uh, uh, models like the Bologna that we have here that is uniform in Europe. Gabriela, please go. Well, I think the, um, the more obvious reason to be closer to uh, European uh, course studies is that our students could theoretically be able to take some semester um, in Europe, and that would be very uh, a really good thing for them. So there, I think it would be desirable to have certain uniformity. But then, of course, it's also uh, I think a good idea to have sp something special about each program that 
makes it also um, oh, the the whole offering of programs may, uh, will be much richer. Okay, so mobility would be one, one aspect that would be very much uh, valued. Uh, what is the opinion of the others? And maybe we can introduce something else. Uh, to what point is necessary to have these programs in different ways, in different places, like number of years, etc., according to the general background that musical education has in your country? Because that's, of course, not the same in every country. If we can have maybe someone from uh, from Chile uh, talking about this, because Yo, I heard also, I know, yeah. Also, yeah. Te digo algo. Uh, I'm just gonna talk. Um, I'm just gonna speak for my instrument, uh, the viola da gamba, mm -hmm. um, um, because I just asked Sergio so that he gives me his opinion. So I'm gonna give that later on. Um, but at this moment, at this moment we the fact that now we have these six years uh, studies here in chile for the early music instruments i think it's an advantage because uh, as it's like barely impossible to have children studying these instruments in the in the let's say basic part of the study so when they are still at school we are taking students from zero I am taking students from zero. Okay. And some of them come from the cello. Some of them I teach uh, at my house before uh, one year or something, a couple of months to prepare them to uh, to pass the entrance exams, which which are specific for each instrument, of course, uh, uh, other than the exams they do to go to university. Anywho, so. Um, in that sense, and it might be that the other early music teachers might agree with this, it's an advantage because we can take these people from zero or almost zero and have this six years time to at least prepare them to, to have a, a better opportunity to apply abroad, uh, even if they have to go a little bit between comas back and enter another bachelor again, but they will have more experience a little bit in this sense for us. It's, it was a good change. I'm gonna now listen to what Sergio said to me and in a moment, while somebody else talks, I'm gonna say what he thinks about this point. Good, thank you very much. Can I ask maybe Christian, what is your view, what is your view on this uh, regarding the number of years, etc. Well, I totally agree with Florencia and what she said. I mean, we have the same situation here. We need to really accept the students from, from, from that. And the point is, uh, what I mentioned before as well, is that the conservatories here, I mean, the music school here is not a conservatory. It belongs to your university. So sometimes we have to work under that patterns, you know, under the, that, that, that scheme. And we try to adjust as much as possible um, how to do it. For example, for us, uh, with the program that we have that is pedagogical department, etc., we have a really big troubles, for example, to try to present and explain what means um, uh, an individual lesson, you know? It's complicated to understand, you know, why you have to teach uh, to one, uh, you can teach the same to 30, no? No, it doesn't work like that. So it's many small discussions and battles that you have to to give in order to to try to keep uh, what we want to do and we should do, and at the same time try to to adjust to this model. No, because finally the the people is in some way looking for an, a, a decree. No, and as uh, Florencia say, and a decree that. Uh, uh, allow them to finally go abroad or continue students or do into a magister or finally a PhD or whatever, you know. So we need to really focus on that, but at the same time, uh, deal all the time with this structure. Okay, okay. Maybe Kelly and then uh, Jorge, that was also raising his hand. Thank you so much. I've so much enjoyed these presentations. Um, I'm, I have two things to say. One is a reaction to Florencia, 
about the idea of um, the bachelor's degree, um, maybe setting up a path for students to then come and do a second bachelor's degree in, in Europe. Um, the only thing that I think is quite important, maybe that isn't very well known, is certainly in Switzerland, uh, because I'm at the Scuola Cantorum Basiliensis, it is not possible to do a second bachelor's degree after having achieved the first, even if it's outside of the, you know, in a foreign country, even anywhere in the world. So this is a very important point. I have to consider them as either a very short bachelor's degree or a master, straight into the master's. So this is important for us to communicate with so that we can offer the students the best mixture of what we all have to offer. And maybe I just wanted to also give you a compliment uh, to all of you before I pass the floor back, which is um, what I very much enjoy is seeing um, the diversity of your offerings, but also the non-European focus of your courses. Um, and I think that we can learn from you. We are quite Eurocentric and um, I would love to be to be more in touch so that we can share and learn from you. What is in your curriculum in um, American Baroque, for instance, that I saw in a couple of your programs. I would love to, to see this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. Uh, I wanted to say just, I, I think if, if Jorge can wait for a second, maybe Florencia is reacting to Kelly immediately. And uh, just uh, to, because Kelly was already praising one part, I want to praise one thing just before we continue is the huge effort that I see in everyone, the passion that I see behind all of this to get these things moving, because otherwise, be, be, without that, that would have been impossible. I can see that in, in all your pre presentations. Florencia. Yes, um, I know. I know what you're saying, Kelly, and I know this information. Yeah, uh, the thing is, like, I, and I know that this is in every country in Europe. This is changing towards that direction because when we were studying in the Netherlands, this process was, was starting to happen. We could not have two two masters at, at that moment. For example, once we finished our masters, we could not undertake another one or another bachelor. So I know this is going towards that direction, and um, and and we are. I am aware of this, how this is changing. So in this is in this sense that we are trying to have our students. I, me, I think it like this: more prepared. No, I don't want them to take another bachelor. But the reality is that sometimes, and now it, that it's not going to be possible, it's not going to be possible. But I, what I wanted to say about the, um, this point is that the, we have we have good things going on here, but we have one not amazing thing going on here: is that we're far away. So one thing that the students struggle very much. And I don't know at what extent they realize this is contact with other musicians. Because we are maybe, we are three professional level gamba players living in Chile. So when they go to concerts, <laughs> they are listening to the same, you know what I mean, no? So well, and, yeah, and I, I think that when, when, them, when you were living here, there were three <laughs> in the same street. Probably. Yeah, I know. When I was living in the Netherlands, we were like five gamba players at the same tram stop around. Yeah, so I know I know what you're saying. But um, and I want to complement this uh, one second, if Isaac allows me, with what Sergio Scandia uh, just told me on the on the phone, is that in the in the way in the sense of the subjects we are teaching, and we are and the the line of. Uh, the focus of the studies that we are trying to implement, we are uh, looking at Europe as a reference uh, because we see that you guys are so much further in this path. Um, we are in a very new uh, way of doing things with the disadvantages and the advantages because we are seeing also the experience, no? But, um, okay. Yeah. So this is, this is, an, yeah, makes, an important makes, thing here in South America makes, is makes, how makes much... a lot of sense. I, I would say that this is a reason for closer collaboration right now, uh, because one thing that might happen is that the things that are being done looking to Europe is the model of Europe 10 years ago or 20 years ago when people were, were, were there studying. Yeah? And maybe we can have a closer collaboration and then we can also learn from you and have a, uh, your own experiences. Maybe Jorge and then, and then Gabriela, we will go a little bit over time. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. 
Well, thank you. It's, it's a very short ref um, uh, thought I have. Um, does anybody of you know why why uh, the fee and the institutional fee for non-European people is so high in in, in the countries of the EU? I don't know. You are, what is because it has been always like this, but now it's almost. Imp I have I had two former students that they're thinking to go abroad already for five years and they cannot do that. Uh, because they have to pay, I don't know, 8,000 8, euros or whatever. I remember I have been in, 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 in the Netherlands. I, I was very lucky because I had a scholarship in the 90s. And in Basel, I was an, on an external schule, so I paid n nothing for semester in my, my, my time. But this has been increased considerably. So wh what do you think? Why is that? Wh what do you think this is because of what? Well, I don't know if I can, uh, because you said the example of Netherlands, for example, yeah, and that was, well, that has been always, yeah, yeah okay. in other places is, is, is different. I guess, I guess, I don't know the exact situation, but I guess there is like a, a part of the subsidies are given by the European Union, and therefore probably they are given for citizens of the European Union as part of the subsidies. There is another subsidy that has to do with the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, with, with uh, the subsidy that is, that is given for Dutch people that according to law has to be also applicable to people who are not Dutch as long as they are European because we have this agreement that uh, everyone that is European can be, yeah, they can freely move and they have the same rights, let's say at least nominally than uh, a citizen of any, of any other country. So it would not say, yeah, I don't want to put it that way. It's not that it is made more expensive to the to 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 foreigners, but that it is made cheaper for 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 locals, so to speak. Yeah, and therefore you have this 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 uh, difference. Yeah, uh, without wanting without wanting to defend this, uh, of course. But just no, no, I'm, I'm just not inquiring. You are just saying that it's okay yeah, with it. But the, the problem is this is what it prevents our our. our people to go uh, our mobility yeah our mobility yes, uh, you know the, if, if we had this sort of like mobility like we have in europe also with other countries then students can just have the description in one university or one institution and they can have a semester in other places with with the erasmus system we we, we have in europe is, is is like that so actually the, the fee that you pay is the one of your own institution not the one of the etc so uh maybe we can work into this direction the direction of having as much mobility as possible which was what Gabriela was saying, and uh, maybe this is uh, also the chance to, to, to go back to her. Gabriela, you wanted to add something? Yes, to what Florencia was saying, I'm sorry to go back, but just to contrast, we in Mexico, we also start from zero. And uh, so the way we've, we've dealt with this is with the three years before the bachelor's degree. That's why we have this propedeutico that's so long because we have to start people off and then they uh, they do the exam for the university. So I just wanted to compare it to our Good, so that was uh, quickly just uh, talking about the differences uh, between the, yeah, we don't really have uh, uh, more time. Florence, do you want to say something else? Yes, just to say something to Gabriela. Um, we, when I started my studies, the this basic part of the studies before the university, it was possible for people who were not at the school to take it. So I did that. I did five, uh, three years. Now that's not possible. Only children can access this. So we have to. It's different. No, you see, every every place has their own like things. So we can't take students um, outside of the university, bro. <laughs> That's it. If 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 someone wants to wants to react to this, just please uh, go. Uh, even if you're interrupting a bit. I just have to say only one uh, short thing, just to 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 make clear. Um, we know in Argentina, or at least in the in the in the conservatorium, where we want to go with the, with the, with the, with the, the ideal after experiences, after trying things, and also hearing all all the comments. 
we, are, we already know what to do. The problem is we are stuck by the problems of bureaucracy. We cannot, we cannot spread, we cannot move. We, 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 we have sort of a, a molding and there we have to survive. And this is quite um, difficult for us in terms of, of changing. But just, just this. Felipe, go ahead. You're muted, try. We cannot hear you. I, at least I cannot hear you. No, we cannot hear you, sorry. Maybe something with the, with the setup. Uh, might be might be something with the setup of the of the of the sound of the sound system in the in the meantime i, I just wanted to offer a couple of uh, a couple of ideas uh, first of all first of all i would really uh, try to i would really like to encourage you uh, to uh, or offer you uh, to be in touch with the aac as much as much as possible, and in this case, with the with the early music part of the of the AEC, so that uh, I don't think we can offer solutions, but we can uh, we can also do some projects from our own side, uh, you know, and maybe we can uh, do a little bit of lobbying for funds for fundraising and these sort of things, and do projects across uh, uh, across the Atlantic from that from that perspective. So maybe that would be something that can be can be uh, useful to that we can uh, help a little bit from from our side. That is one thing. The other thing is um, apart from apart from the formal parts of the of the program, which of course have to depend many like like really a lot on all the structure. Uh, I, I think I saw already some some things uh, from the activity of the UNAB that I couldn't join because of of, of time uh, and the different types and all of that. But uh, things that can be done in a bit more informal way, online discussions, seminars that can be presented across. Yeah? This is the kind of thing that one institution can do and then other institutions can benefit yeah? across, uh, uh, across, across the map. I would say that would be one, one, uh, one thing that we could also help to, uh, to organize or actually organize ourselves, et cetera, and keep, uh, and keep, uh, keep in touch uh, for, for this. So how can this kind of institutions like the AAC and the, in, in, in specifically the, uh, the Early Music Task Force help to uh, foster collaboration. And by fostering collaboration, uh, sort of like taking a little bit more profit uh, uh, of the efforts that are being done in one place, another place, etc. Like, for example, in the case of like online seminars, especially for uh, the situations that we are talking about, uh, in which geographic geographical distance makes many things uh, so difficult. Yeah? Maybe Felipe, you want to try once more and see if the sound magically. Uh, it's not really working. So sorry about that. Or if you want to write something on the chat and uh, then someone can, uh, 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 can, can read it also possible. Uh, I had the feeling that Jorge wanted to say something else. No? Okay. So oh, we, have, we have the text from, we have the text from, uh, 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 from Felipe. Uh, Felipe has two reflections to offer from his point of view. How does early music practice, particularly as conceived from its differences in music theory, relate to today's reality in the sense, uh, I guess, yeah, the, there's the other par paragraph. Today's culture imposes a way of listening that is neither fully conscious nor fully decoded, to which early music comes to question or remove existing schemes. So I have had problems stemming from people's level of sensitivity to sensitivity to musical phenomena and from their level of cognition and therefore of Control over them. Absolutely agree, uh, uh, Felipe. I, I'm many times talking about these things in the lessons also, sort of like we are trying to teach students into a very refined code, and then who is listening in that in that code? For example, the whole the whole aspect of musical rhetoric that was sort of like understood by by the listeners of of uh, of Baroque music in uh, uh, in a way. By the way. These reflections, these reflections, or these kind of discussions, are the kind of discussions that we have 
if the if they could leave it. Yeah. So I would really like to uh, invite you to 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 keep in touch and to see uh, if uh, you want to join some of our online discussions and also in order for you to host maybe at some point one of these discussions and introduce a topic uh, uh, of your own. I really invite you to uh, see the discussions that we have had so far and see the kind of uh, informal meetings that we are doing, like similar like today, but of course dedicated to, to, to other topics. I cannot see everyone in my screen so far because I think some, uh, that, that I have the, the wrong mode here. Uh, but I would say, uh, unless someone has something to offer, we are going to proceed to closing uh, to close this uh, this meeting. These meetings are planned to be uh, one and a half hours. We went a little bit over time, but I think it is the moment to, uh, to start closing them. So first of all, I would like to thank the four institutions and the individuals that have been present uh, representing each one of these uh, four institutions, the uh, Univers Universidad Católica de Chile, Universidad Alberto Hurtado de Chile, uh, Conservatorio Manuel de Falla of Buenos Aires, and uh, uh, the Universidad Nacional Autónoma of, of uh, Mexico. So first of all, thank you very much. Thank you very much for accepting this invitation. By the way, thank you for the work that we did before because I was meeting individually uh, the representatives of each uh, of this institution before they offer their time to explain to me how their how what what are their challenges and the uh, and the opportunities and uh, uh, thank you to everyone else that was that was present especially I want to also thank my colleagues in the uh, uh, task force and most of all of course Sara who is always uh, organizing this she's always responsible Sara Priviterra from the AEC office um, uh, she's always hosting this this kind of, of events and organizing them. I would have a, like a, a question from you all. If it is possible to get this kind of documentation that you were presenting, you can send it to my email or actually also to to the AEC uh, email that you get from that you got from Sarah. Then we will be sharing these uh, these uh, these things around. Uh, uh, it would be really nice if we can keep uh, if we can keep uh, um, connected and uh, uh, maybe have more sessions on, the, on, on, this, on this topic, on collaborations between the different institutions, that would be uh, the best from our point of view, how far we can foster this collaboration. And uh, uh, by the way, also, if you uh, now, like Sarah is reminding us that we have another uh, quote leave it on 25th May, and that would be hosted uh, in collaboration with the REMA, which is the European Network for Early Music. Uh, uh, that would be dedicated more to the uh, to finding audiences, to the topic of audience, for which the question or the reflection that Felipe was offering, I think, would be very much on on, on the topic. Yeah, looking for audiences, which is of course a part of uh, 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 the work of uh, cultural management, but also from the perspective of what kind what kind of of uh, uh, what kind of sharing, what kind of material we share with the audience, connecting uh, with the audience, as Claire is 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 adding now. And uh, uh, to say one more once more, thank you to uh, everyone. That, that has been present um, and invite you for the next uh, uh, event that uh, that we have. And uh, one last thing, if I may say, maybe I'm getting out of line here. This had to be in English, of course, but all these institutions can collaborate in Spanish also. I don't represent a Spanish institution, but I'm Spanish myself. So I, I see Sara from, from Spain, Sara Ruiz. So maybe some other kind of like collaborations can be done uh, reinforcing the common heritage that we that that we share across uh, the Atlantic yeah, with the with the Spanish speaking countries. Thank you very much again. Uh, I hope to meet some of you in person soon, uh, especially those that are so far away to see at some point some of you in person. And uh, uh, that's it. If someone else want to if, if Sarah wants to close the yeah, Sarah Primitera, you want to close the, the event? You can and close the event. Notices, <laughs> no, not no notice. Uh, send uh, send your presentation and your email address to the um, events email address I put in the chat, and then we will add you to the database of the early music contacts, so you will get notifications on the quarterly, but including the recording of this session. So see, hopefully, see you on the twenty fifth of May. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Sarah, and thank you everyone. Ciao. Bye bye. <laughs>